Good evening. My name is Christopher John Francis Boone, and this is my play. As such, it would be in the best interest of my audience to turn off all cell phones. I don't like beeping, buzzing, or other horrendous noises going off while the show is going on. The noise creates distractions and takes away from the action. Please turn them off now. Thank you. Jumping Jack Christ, what have you done? Oh no, for the love of God. It was seven minutes after midnight. The dog was lying on the grass in the middle of the lawn in front of Mr. Shear's house. Its eyes were closed. It looked as if it was running on its side, the way dogs run when they think they're chasing a cat in a dream, but the dog was not running or asleep. The dog was dead. Get away from my dog! There was a garden fork sticking out of the dog. The dog was called Wellington. It belonged to Mrs. Shears, who was our friend. She lived on the opposite side of the road, two houses to the left. Get away from my dog! My name is Christopher John Francis Boone. I live at 36 Randolph Street, Swindon, Wiltshire. I know all the countries of the world and capital cities and every prime number up to 7,507. Get away from my dog, for Christ's sake! After 12 and a half minutes, a policeman arrived. He had a big orange leaf stuck to the bottom of his shoe, which was poking out from one side. This is good, Christopher. It's quite exciting. I like the details. They make it more realistic. He squatted down next to me, he said to me. Would you like to tell me what's going on here, young man? I do not tell lies. Mother used to say that this was because I was a good person, but it is not because I am a good person, it is because I can't tell lies. The dog is dead. I got that far. I think someone killed the dog. How old are you? I'm 15 years and three months and two days. And what precisely are you doing in the garden? I'm talking to you. Okay, what were you doing in the garden in the first place? I was holding the dog. Why were you holding the dog? I like dogs. Did you kill the dog? I did not kill the dog. You seem very upset about this. I'm going to ask you once again. Oh, Young man. Young man. Oh, Young man. I want to ask you to please stand up calmly and quietly and stop making that noise. I'm arresting you for assaulting a police officer. I strongly advise you get into the back of the police car because if you try to monkey this again, you stupid idiot, I'm going to seriously lose my crap. Is that understood? I find people confusing. This is for two main reasons. The first main reason is that people do a lot of talking without using any words. Siobhan says that if you raise one eyebrow, it can mean lots of different things. It can mean I want to do sex with you? I never said that. Yes, you did. I didn't use those words, Christopher. You did on September 12th last year at first. And it can also mean I think what you just said was very stupid. Could you empty your pockets onto the desk, please? Is that in case I have anything in them that I could use to kill myself or escape or attack a policeman with? That's right. I've got a Swiss army knife, but I only use that for doing odd jobs, not for stabbing things or for hurting you. Jolly good. A piece of string, a piece of a wooden puzzle, three pellets of rat food for Toby, my pet rat, one pound forty-seven. This is made up of a one pound coin, a twenty pence coin, two ten pence coins, a five pence coin, and a two pence coin. A red paper clip, a key for the front door, a Swiss army knife with thirteen attachments, including a wire stripper and a saw and a toothpick and tweezers. Could you take off your watch, please, Christopher? No. I'm sorry, Christopher. I need my watch to know exactly what time it is. Give it here, lad. Ah! Oh, 
You keep it. Do you have any family, Christopher? Yes, I do. And who is your family? Father and mother, but mother is dead. And also Uncle Terry, who is in Sunderland. He is my father's brother. And my grandparents too, but three of them are dead. And Grandma Burton is in a home because she has seen all dementia and thinks I'm someone on television. Right. Lovely. Do you know your father's phone number, Christopher? I could see the Milky Way as they drove me towards the town centre, could you? Some people think the Milky Way is a long line of stars, but it isn't. Our galaxy is a huge disk of stars, millions of light years across. For a long time, scientists were puzzled by the fact that the sky is dark at night, even though there are billions of stars in the universe. Is that right? Christopher, Mr. Boone, could you come this way, please? Are you going to interview me and record the interview? I don't think there will be any need for that. I've spoken to your father, and he says that you didn't mean to hit the policeman. Did you mean to hit the policeman? Yes. Uh, but you didn't mean to hurt the policeman. No, I didn't mean to hurt the policeman. I just wanted him to stop touching me. You know that it's wrong to hit a policeman, don't you? I do. Did you kill the dog, Christopher? I did not kill the dog. Do you know that it is wrong to lie to a policeman and that you can get into a very great deal of trouble if you do? Yes. Do you know who killed the dog? No. Are you telling the truth? Yes, I always tell the truth. Right. I'm going to give you a caution. Is that going to be on a piece of paper like a certificate I can keep? No. A caution means that we are going to keep record of what you did, that you hit the policeman, but it was an accident and that you didn't mean to hurt the policeman. But it wasn't an accident. Christopher, please. If you get into any more trouble, we will take out this record and see that you've been given a caution and we will take things much more seriously. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The second main reason I find people confusing is that people often talk using metaphors. These are examples of metaphors. I am going to seriously lose my crown. He was the apple of her eye. They had a skeleton in their cupboard. We had a real pig of a day. The dog was stone dead. Metaphor means carrying something from one place to another, and it is when you describe something by using a word for something that it isn't. This means that the word metaphor is a metaphor. Wow, that's clever. It's true. Yes. I think it should be called a lie because a pig is not like a day, and people do not have skeletons in their cupboards. And when I try to make a picture of the phrase in my head, it just confuses me because imagining an apple in someone's eye doesn't have anything to do with liking someone a lot and it makes you forget what the person was talking about. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't kill Wellington. I know. Christopher, you have to stay out of trouble. I didn't know I was going to get into trouble. I like Wellington. I went to say hello to her, but I didn't know that someone had killed him. Look, just keep your nose out of other people's business. Are you going to find out who killed Wellington? Are you listening to what I was saying, Christopher? Yes, I was listening to what you were saying, but when someone gets murdered, you have to find out who did it for a day it can be punished. It's a bloody dog, Christopher. A bloody dog. I think dogs are important too. I think some dogs are cleverer than some people. Nicholas, for example, who comes to school on Thursdays, needs help in his food and he probably couldn't even fetch a stick. Leave it. I wonder if the police will find out who killed Wellington and punish the person. For God's sake, leave it. Are you sad about Wellington? Yes, Christopher. You could say that. You could very well say that. Mother died two years ago. I came home from school one day and no one answered the door, so I went and found the secret key that we keep under a flower pot outside the kitchen window. I let myself into the house and wiped my feet on the mat. I put the key in the bowl on the table. I took my coat off and hung it by the side of the fridge so it would be ready for school the next day. 
and gave three pellets of rat food to Toby, who's my pet rat. I made myself a raspberry milkshake and heated it up in the microwave. seen your mum? No. He went downstairs and started making some phone calls. I did not hear what he said. Then he came up to my room and said he had to go out for a while and he wasn't sure how long he would be. He said that if I needed anything, I should call him on his mobile phone. He was away for two and a half hours. When he came back, I went downstairs. Is it a psychiatric hospital? No, it's an ordinary hospital. She's got a problem. A problem with her heart. I'll make her a get well card. If I make her a get well card, will you take her in for tomorrow? How are you today, Christopher? I'm very well, thank you. That's good. In the bus on the way to school, we passed four red cars in a row. Four? So today is a good day. Great, I am glad. I've decided I'm going to find out who killed Wellington because a good day is a day for projects and planning things. Who's Wellington? Wellington is a dog that used to belong to our neighbour, Mrs Shears, who was our friend. But he is dead now because somebody killed him by putting a garden fork through him. And then I found him, and then a policeman thought I killed him, but I had it. And then he tried to touch me, so I hit him, and then I had to go to the police station. Gosh! And I'm going to find out who really killed Wellington and make it a project. Even though Father told me not to. Did he? Yes. I see. I don't always do what I'm told. Why? Because when people tell you what to do, it is usually confusing and does not make sense. For example, people often say, be quiet. But they never tell you how long to be quiet for. No. Why did your father tell you not to try to find out who killed Wellington? I don't know. If your father's told you not to do something, maybe you shouldn't do it. Mm. Well, we're meant to be writing stories today, so why don't you write about what happened to Wellington? Okay, I will. I don't know what kind of heart attack, Christopher. Now isn't the moment to be asking questions like that. It was probably an aneurysm. I'm sorry, Christopher. I'm really, really sorry. That evening I went round to Mrs. Shear's house and knocked on the door and waited for her to answer it. What are you doing here? I wanted to come and tell you that I didn't kill Wellington and also I'm going to find out who killed him. Christopher, I really don't think I want to see you right now. Do you know who killed Wellington? Christopher, if you don't go now, I will call the police again. Reverend Peters, where is heaven? Uh, I'm sorry, Christopher? In our universe, whereabouts is it exactly? Well, it's not really 
in our universe. It's in another kind of place altogether. There isn't anything outside our universe, Reverend Pierce. There is another kind of place altogether. Except there might be if you go through a black hole, because a black hole is what is called a singularity. Which means that the gravity of a black hole is so big that even an electromagnetic wave like light can't get out of it. And electromagnetic waves are where you get information about things which are far away. And if heaven is in outer space through a black hole, then dead people have to be fired into space in a rocket to get there, and they aren't old people would notice. <laughs> well, when I said that heaven is outside our universe, it's, it's really just a matter of speaking. I suppose what it really means is that they are with God. But where is God? Uh, Christopher, we should talk about this on another day when, when I have more time. The next day was Saturday, and there's not much to do on a Saturday unless Father takes me out somewhere on an outing to the boating lake or to the garden center. But on this Saturday, England were playing Romania at football, which meant that we weren't going to go on an outing because Father wanted to watch the match on the television. So I made a decision. I decided to do some more detection. I decided to go out on my own. I do not like strangers, so talking to the other people in our street was brave. But if you're going to do detective work, you have to be brave, so I had no choice. Can I help you? Do you know who killed Wellington? Who are you? I'm Christopher Boone, and I know you, you're Mr. Thompson. I'm Mr. Thompson's brother. Do you know who killed Wellington? Who the hell is Wellington? Mrs. Shears' dog. Mrs. Shears is from number 39. Someone killed her dog? With a fork. Jesus Christ! A garden fork. Oh. Do you know who killed her? I haven't a bloody clue. Did you see anything suspicious on Thursday evening? Look, son, do you really think you should be going around asking questions like this? Yes, I do, because I want to find out who killed him, and I'm writing a book about him. Well, I was in Colchester on Thursday, so you're asking the wrong bloke. Thank you for helping with my investigation. It's Christopher, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you know who killed Wellington? No. No, I don't. No, I'm sorry. Do you see anything suspicious on Thursday evening which might be a clue? Like what? Like strangers or the sound of people arguing. Perhaps you should be talking to your father about this. I can't talk to my father about it because he told me to stay out of other people's business. Maybe he has a point, Christopher. So you don't know anything which might be a clue? No. Now you stay out of trouble, young man. I will. Thank you for helping me with my investigation. Do you know who killed Wellington? Bloody hell! Policemen really are getting younger, aren't they? Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-seven, twenty-one, forty-three, forty-seven, fifty-three, fifty-nine, sixty-one, sixty-seven, Seventy-one, seventy-three, seventy-nine, eighty-three, eighty-nine, ninety-seven. Do you know who killed Wellington? Oh, I heard about it yesterday. Tread, tread. Do you know who killed him? No, I don't. Somebody must know because the person who killed Wellington knows that they killed Wellington. Unless they were a loony person and didn't know what they were doing, or unless they had amnesia. You're Christopher, aren't you? Yes. We haven't talked before, have we? No, I don't like talking to strangers, but I'm doing detective work. I see you going to school on your school bus every day when I'm walking my dog. It's very nice of you to come and say hello, even if it's only because you're doing detective work. Thank you. I have a grandson your age. My age is 15 years and three months and three days. Well, almost your age. You don't have a dog, do you? No. Probably like a dog, wouldn't you? I have a rat. A rat? He's called <laughs> Elvis! Most people don't like rats because they think they carry diseases like bubonic plague. That's only because they lived in sewers and so do we have ships coming from four ring countries where there are strange diseases. But rats are very clean. Do you want to come in for tea? I don't go into other people's houses. Well, perhaps I could bring some tea out of you. Do you like lemonade? 
I only like orange ale. Luckily, I have some of that as well. And what about Battenberg? I don't know because I don't know what Battenberg is. It's a type of cake. It has marzipan icing around the edge. Is it a long cake with a square cross section that can be divided into equally sized, alternately coloured squares? Yes, I think you could probably describe it like that. I think I would like the pink squares, but not the yellow squares because I don't like yellow. I don't, don't know what marzipan is, so I don't know whether I'd like that either. I'm afraid marzipan is yellow too. Perhaps I could bring up some cookies. Do you like cookies? Yes, some sorts of cookies. I'll get a selection. She moved very slowly because she was an old lady and she was inside the house for more than six minutes. And I began to get nervous because I didn't know her well enough to know whether she was telling the truth about getting Orange Aid and Battenberg cake. And I thought she might be ringing the police and then I'd get into much more serious trouble because of the caution. So I walked away. Why would you kill a dog? I wouldn't. I think you would only kill a dog if A, you hated the dog, or B, because you were a lunatic. Or C, because you wanted to make Mrs. Shears sad. I don't know anybody who hated Wellington, so if it was A, it was probably a stranger. I don't know any lunatics either, so if it was B, it was also probably a stranger. Right. But most murders are committed by someone who is known to the victim. In fact, you are most likely to be murdered by a member of your own family on Christmas Day. Is that a fact? Yes, actually, it is a fact. Wellington was therefore most likely to have been killed by someone known to him. I only know one person who didn't like Mr. Shears, and that is Mr. Shears! <laughs> who divorced her and left her to live somewhere else and who knew Wellington very well indeed. This means that Mr. Shears is my prime suspect. Christopher, I th I'm going to find out more about Mr. Shears. Mr. Boone, nobody has ever taken an A-level examination in this school before. He can be the first then. I don't know if we have the facilities in the school to allow him to do that. Well, then get the facilities. I can't treat Christopher differently to any other student. And why not? Because then everybody would want to be treated differently. So? It would set a precedent. Christopher could always take his A-levels later when he's 18, which is, after all, the age that everyone else takes their A-levels. Look, Christopher is getting a crap enough deal as it is, don't you think? But that you crapping on him from a great height as well. Jesus, this is the one thing he's really good at. We should talk about this later, maybe on our own. Are the things that you're too embarrassed to say to me in front of Christopher? No, it's not that. Say them now, then. If Christopher were to take an A-level, he would have to have a supervisor, a member of staff, looking after him on his own in separate rooms. Here, yeah. they could do it after school. I'll pay for it. Fifty quid. Uh, Mr. Is Pitt that enough? I'm not taking no for an answer. Where have you been? Open up. I've just had a call from Mrs. Sheets. What the hell were you doing poking around her garden? I was doing detective work. Oh, Jesus Christ. How many times do I have to tell you? Keep your nose out of other people's business. I think Mr. Shears probably killed Wellington. Will not have that man's name mentioned in my house! Why not? That man is evil. Does that mean that he might have killed Wellington? Jesus wept. Okay, Christopher, I'm going to say this for the last and final time. You are not to go asking Mrs. Shears who killed that bloody dog. You are not to go asking anyone who killed that bloody dog. You are not to go trespassing on other people's gardens, and you would have stopped this ridiculous bloody detective game right now. I'm going to make you promise to me, Christopher. You know what it means when I make you promise. I think I would make a very good astronaut. Yes, mate, you probably would. 
be a good astronaut, you have to be intelligent, and I'm intelligent, and you have to understand how machines work, and I'm good at understanding how machines work. You also have to be someone who would like being on their own in a tiny spacecraft thousands and thousands of miles away from the surface of the Earth, and not panic, or get claustrophobia, or homesick, or insane. And I really like little spaces, so long as there's no one else in them with me. I've noticed. Sometimes when I want to be on my own, I get into the laundry room and slide in beside the boiler and hold the door closed behind me. And sit there and think for hours, and it makes me feel very calm. So I have to be an astronaut on my own, or have my own pot of spacecraft that no one else could come into. And also, there are no yellow things or brown things in a spacecraft, so that would be okay too. And I would have to talk to other people from Mission Control, we would do that from a radio link-up and a TV monitor. So it wouldn't be like real people who are strangers, but it would be like playing a computer game, which you like. And I wouldn't be homesick at all, because I'd be surrounded by lots of things I like, which are machines and computers and out of space. I'd be able to look out of a tiny window in the side of the spacecraft and know that there's no one else near me for thousands and thousands of miles. Could you please just give it a bit of a break, mate? Please. And to know that there was no one else near me for thousands and thousands of miles. Which is what I sometimes pretend at night in the summer. When I go and lie in the lawn and look up at the sky and I put my hands around the sides of my face. But I can't see the fence and the chimney and the clothesline. And I can pretend I'm in space. And all I could see would be stars. And stars are the places where the molecules that light is made of were constructed billions of years ago. For example, all the iron in your blood which stops you being anemic was made in a star. And I would like it if I could take Toby with me into space. Which might be allowed because they sometimes do take animals into space for experiments. So if I could think of a good experiment you could do with a rat that didn't hurt the rat, then I could make them let me take Toby. But if they didn't let me, I would still go because it would be a dream come true. Father said. I see. So the, it's, it's a pity. So the book is finished. Well, Christopher, if your father said he wanted you to stop, then I think he probably <coughs> has a good reason, and I think you should stop. But you can still be very proud because what you've written so far is just, well, it's great. It's not a proper book. Why not? It doesn't have a proper ending. I never found out who killed Wellington, so the murder is still at large. Not all murders are solved. Not all murderers are caught. Father said that Mr. Shears is an evil man. And maybe that meant that he was the one who killed Wellington. I think you should do what your father tells you to do. Why would he find it quite upsetting? 
I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very much. Did Mr. Shears kill Mother? Kill her? Yes, did he kill Mother? No, no, of course he didn't kill your mother. Or did he give her stress enough so that she died of a heart attack? I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Or did he injure her so that she had to go into hospital? Did she have to go into hospital? Yes, and it wasn't very serious at first, but she had a heart attack when she was in hospital. Oh my goodness. And she died. Oh my goodness, Christopher, I'm so sorry. I never realized. Why did you say, I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very oh, much? Oh, you did. Christopher, look. Perhaps we should take a little walk in the park together. This is not the place to talk about this kind of thing. I told you this. Why? Christopher, please just trust me. I promise. Your mother, before she died, was very good friends with Mr. Shears. I know. No, Christopher, I'm not sure that you do. I mean that they were very, very good friends. Do you mean that they were doing sex? Yes, Christopher, that is what I mean. Is that why Mr. Shears left Mrs. Shears because he was doing sex with someone else while he was still married to Mrs. Shears? Yes, I expect so. Oh, I think I should go now. Are you okay, Christopher? I can't be on my own with you because you are a stranger. I'm not a stranger, Christopher. I'm a friend. Have you told your father about this? No. Are you going to tell your father about this? No. Did it make you sad to find this out? Find what out? make you sad to find out that your mother and Mr. Shears had an affair? No. Are you telling the truth? Yes, I always tell the truth. It didn't make me feel sad because mother is dead. So I'd be feeling sad about something that isn't real and doesn't exist and that would be stupid. What was your mother like? Do you remember much about her? I remember the 20th of July, 2008. I was nine years old. It was a Sunday. We were on holiday in Cornwall. We were on the beach in a place called Port Perro. Mother was wearing a pair of shorts made out of denim and a stripy blue swimming costume. And she was smoking menthol cigarettes, which were mint flavor. She wasn't swimming. She was sunbathing on a towel which had red and orange stripes. She's reading a book by Georgette Hayer called The Masqueraders. Then she finished sunbathing. She went into the water. And then she said, Bloody Nora, it's cold. Bloody Nora, it's cold. And she said, I should come and swim too. But I didn't like swimming because I don't like taking my clothes off. I said I should just roll my trousers up and walk into the water a little way. So I did. And then Mother said, Christopher, look, it's lovely. And she jumped backwards and disappeared under the water, and I thought a shark could eat her. So I screamed. And she stood up out of the water and came over to where I was standing, and she held her right hand and spread her fingers like a fan. Come ah! on, Christopher, touch my hand. Come on, now stop screaming, touch my hand. Listen to me, Christopher. You can do it. It's okay, Christopher. It's okay. There aren't any sharks in Cornwall. When we were in South. 
inside the park. Mrs. Alexander stopped walking and said, I'm going to say something to you, and you must promise not to tell your father I told you this. Your mother, before she died, was very good friends with Mr. Shears. If I hadn't married your father, I think I'd be living in a little farmhouse in the south of France with someone called Jean. And he'd be a local handyman, you know, painting and decorating for people, gardening, building fences, and we'd have a French bulldog, and a veranda with figs growing over it, and there would be a field of sunflowers at the bottom of the garden, and a little town on the hill in the distance, and we'd sit outside in the evenings and drink red wine, smoke French cigarettes and watch the sun go down. What is this? It's a book I'm writing. Is this true? Did you speak to Mrs. Alexander? Yes. Jesus, Christopher, how stupid are you? What did I tell you, Christopher? Not to mention Mr. Shears' name in her house, and not to go asking Mrs. Shears or anyone about who killed that bloody dog, and not to go trespassing in other people's gardens, and to stop this ridiculous bloody detective game right now. Except I haven't done any of those things. I was just asking Mrs. Alexander about Mrs. Shears because I was doing chatting. Now don't give me that bullets. You knew exactly what you were bloody doing. I've read the book, remember? What else did I say? I don't know. Come on, memory man! Not to go sticking your nose in other people's business. And what do you do? You go sticking your nose in other people's business. You go digging up the past, serving up another top second area you pop into. What am I gonna do with you, Christopher? What the hell am I gonna do with you? I wasn't doing investigations. I think Mrs. Alexander, because I was doing chatting. I ask you for one thing, Christopher. One thing! I didn't want to talk to Mrs. Alexander. It was Mrs. Alexander. Ah, ah, ah. Sorry I hit you, Christopher. I didn't mean to. I love you very much, Christopher. Don't ever forget that. But I worry about you. Because I, I don't want to see you getting into trouble. I don't want to see you get hurt. Understand that I love you, Christopher. Is 
it in the dustbin at the front of the house? The next day when I got home from school, Father was still at work, so I went outside and looked inside the dustbin. But my book wasn't there. I wondered if Father had put it into his van and driven to the dump and put it into one of the big bins there, but I did not want that to be true because then I'd never see it again. One other possibility was that Father had hidden my book somewhere in the house, so I decided to do some detecting and see if I could find it. I started by looking in the kitchen. Then I detected in the laundry room. Then I detected in the dining room. Then I detected in the living room where I found the missing wheel from my Airfix Messerschmitt BF109 G6 model under the sofa. Then I went upstairs, but I didn't do any detecting in my own room because I reasoned that Father would hide something from me in my own room. Unless he was being very clever and doing what is called a double bluff like in a real murder mystery novel. So I decided to look in my own room on the, only if I couldn't find the book anywhere else. I detected in the bathroom, but the only place to look was in the medicine cabinet and there was nothing in there. Which meant that the only room left to detect in was Father's bedroom. Started by looking under the bed. There were five shoes and a comb with lots of hair in it, and a crescent wrench, and a chocolate chip cookie, and a magazine called Men Only, and a pair of underpants from TJ Maxx with a little bit of pee left in them and a Scooby-Doo tie, and a wooden spoon, but not my book. Then I looked in the drawers on either side of the dressing table. But these only contained aspirin, and nail clippers, and batteries, and dental floss, and tissues, and a spare false tooth, and a tampon, but my book wasn't there either. Then I looked in his wardrobe. In the bottom of the wardrobe was a large plastic toolbox, which was full of tools for DIY, which means doing it yourself. But I could see these without opening the box because it was made of transparent gray plastic. Then I saw there was another box underneath the toolbox. The other box was an old cardboard box, which is called a shirt box, because people used to buy shirts in them. And when I opened the shirt box, I saw my book was inside it. And then I heard Father's van pulling up outside the house and I knew I had to think fast and be clever. I heard Father shutting the door of the van and that is when I saw the envelope. It was an envelope addressed to me and it was lying under my book in the shirt box with some other envelopes. I picked it up, it had never been opened. It said, Christopher Boone, 36 Randolph Street, Swindon, Wiltshire. And I noticed there were lots of envelopes and they were all addressed to me, and this was interesting and confusing. Then I noticed the way Christopher and Swindon were written. They were written like this. Christopher. Swindon. I only know three people who do little circles instead of dots over the letter I. And one of them is Siobhan, and one of them was Mr. Loxley, who used to teach at school. And one of them was Mother. Oh, Christopher, what have you been up to, young man? Today we did life skills with Siobhan, which was using money and public transport. Now I tomato soup for lunch and three apples, and I practiced some maths in the afternoon, and I went for a walk in the park with Mrs. Peters and collected leaves and making collages. Excellent, excellent. What do you fancy for chow tonight? Baked beans and broccoli. I think that can be very easily arranged. I'm just going to hang up those shelves in the living room, if you don't mind. It's going to make a bit of a racket, I'm afraid, so if you want to watch television, we're going to have to shift it upstairs. I'll go and be on my own in my room. Right, good man. So 
I went up to my room, and when I was in the room, I shut the door and took out the envelope. I opened the envelope. Inside was this letter. 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW2 5NG 0208887-8907, Dear Christopher, I was looking through some old photos last night, which made me sad. Then, I found a photo of you, playing with the trades that we bought for you a couple of Christmases ago, and that made me happy because it was one of those really good times we had together. Do you remember how you played with it all day and you refused to go to bed at night because you were still playing with it? And we told you about train timetables and you made a train timetable and you made the train run on time. And there was a little wooden station too. And we told you about how when people wanted to go on a train, they went to the station and bought a ticket and then got on a train, and you played with it for weeks. And weeks. And weeks. I liked remembering that a lot. You still haven't written to me. So I know that you are probably still angry with me. I'm sorry, Christopher, but I still love you. And I hope you don't stay angry with me forever. I think about you all the time. Lots of love, your mom. I was really confused. Mother had never written me a letter before, and Mother had never lived in London. I looked at the front of the envelope, and I saw there was a postmark, and there was a date on the postmark. The 16th of October, 2013, which meant that the letter had been posted 18 months after Mother had died. When I started writing my book, there was only one mystery to solve. Now there were two. I decided that I wouldn't think about it anymore that night because I didn't have enough information and could easily leap to the wrong conclusions. Mr. Davis, eh? Joseph eats everything, does he? He once ate one of the little blocks of blue disinfectant which hang inside the toilets, and he once ate a 50 pound note from his mother's wallet. And he had string and rubber bands and tissues and writing paper and paint and plastic forks. Also, he bangs his chin and he screams a lot. I know how he feels. Christopher, I've got to go out. Why? I've just had a call. There's a lady, her cell is flooded. I've got to go out and fix it. Is it an emergency? Yes, mate. It's raining very heavily. It is. The rain looks like white spots. Christopher, if I go out, will you be all right? Yes, I will, because nobody's about it, because everybody's staying indoors. Good. Good. Good luck. I like looking up at the rain. Terrific. I like it because it makes you think. All the water in the world is connected. Does it? This one, this rain, the evaporator actually, somewhere like maybe Gulf of Mexico, maybe, or Baffin Bay. And now it's falling in front of the house. 
Christopher, I'll have my mobile with me. Yeah, so you can call me if there's a problem. Yes. Behave yourself, Christopher. Yeah? Yeah. So I went into his bedroom and I opened up the wardrobe and lifted the toolbox off the top of the shirt box and opened the shirt box. I counted out the letters. There were 43 of them. They were all addressed to me in the same handwriting. I took one and opened it. Inside was this letter. 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG, 0208. 887-8907. I said that I wanted to try and explain to you why I went away when I had the time to do it properly. Now I have lots of time. So I'm sitting with this letter and the radio on and I'm going to try and explain. I was not a very good mother, Christopher. Maybe if things had been different, maybe if you'd been different, I might have been better at it. That's just the way things turned out. I am not like your father. Your father's a much more patient person. He just gets on with things, and when things upset him, he doesn't let it show. But that is not the way I am, and there is nothing I can do to change it. Do you remember once when we were shopping in town together and we had to go into Bentles and it was really crowded and we had to get a Christmas present for Grandma and you were frightened because of all the people in the shop and you crouched down on the floor and put your hands over your ears and you were in the way of everyone so I got cross because I don't like shopping at Christmas either and I told you to behave and I tried to pick you up and move you but you shouted and you knocked those mixers off the shelf and there was a big crash and Everyone turned around to see what was going on and there were boxes and bits of string and bits of broken bowl on the floor and everyone was staring and I saw that you had wet yourself. And I was so cross, I wanted to take you out of the shop but you wouldn't let me touch you so we just had to wait until you stopped screaming. And I remember that night I just cried. I cried. Cried, and your father was really nice about it at first. And he made you supper, and he put you into bed, and he told me that these things happen, and that it would be okay. But I said that I couldn't take it anymore. And eventually, he got really angry, and he told me that I was being stupid, and that I should pull myself together so I hit him. Which was wrong. a lot of arguments like that. And after a while we stopped talking to each other very much because we knew that we'd always end up in an argument. And I felt really lonely. And that was when I started spending lots of time with Roger. That is when I started spending lots of time with Roger. And I know you may not understand any of this, but I wanted to try and explain so that you knew. We had a lot in common, and then we realized that we were in love with one another. And I said that I couldn't leave you. And he was sad, but he understood that you were really important to me. And you started to shout, and I got cross, and I threw the food across the room, which I know I shouldn't have done. And you grabbed the chopping board and you threw it. And it hit my foot and broke my toes. And afterwards at home your father and I had a huge argument. And it made me so sad because seeing the two of you together, it was like you didn't need me at all. I think then I realized that 
You and your father were probably better off if I wasn't living in the house. And Roger asked the Lord to come with him. And it broke my heart, but eventually I decided it would be better for all of us if I went. And so I said yes. And I meant to say goodbye. But when I rang your father, he said I couldn't. He was really angry with me, and he said that I couldn't. He said I couldn't talk to you. And I didn't know what to do. He said that I was being selfish, and so I was never to set foot inside the house again. And so I haven't. I wonder if you can understand any of this. I know it will be difficult for you. Christopher, I thought what I was doing was what was best for all of us. I hope it was. Christopher, I never meant to hurt you. I used to have dreams that everything would get better. Do you remember how you used to say that you wanted to be an astronaut? Well, I would have dreams and you were an astronaut, and you were on television, and I thought, that's my son. <laughs> I wonder what it is you want to be now. Has it changed? Are you still doing Mars? I hope you are. Loads, loads of love. Love it. Christopher! Christopher? Christopher! Christopher! What the hell are you doing? It was an accident, Christopher. I told you that she was in hospital because, because I didn't know how to explain it. It was so complicated. And once I told you that, well, I couldn't just change it. It got out of control. Oh, Jesus, Christopher. You got sick all over you. Look, let's get you up. Get your clothes off, get you in the bed. I'm going to have to touch you, but it's going to be all right. Look, maybe I shouldn't say this, but, but I want you to know that you can trust me. Life is bloody difficult, you know? It's, it's hard telling the truth all the time. But I want you to know that I am trying. You have to know I'm going to tell you the truth about everything from now on. Because if you don't now, it just hurts even more later on.
killed Wellington, Christopher. Just let me explain. When your mum left, Eileen, Mrs. Shear, she was very good to me. She helped me through a very difficult time, and I'm not sure I would have made it without her. But you know how she was round here most days, popping over to see if we were okay, if we needed anything. And I thought, well, Christopher, I'm trying to keep this simple. I thought that me and her were friends. I guess I felt wrong. We argued, Christopher, and she said some things that I'm not going to say to you because they're not nice, but they hurt. And I think she cared more for that bloody talk than she did for us. And maybe that's not so strange looking back. Maybe it's easier living your life with some stupid muck than sharing your life with the other actual human beings. I mean, Jesus, Christopher, we're not exactly low maintenance, are we? Anyway, we had this fight. Well, quite a few fights, actually. And after this particularly nasty little blowout, she chucked me out of the house and you know how that dog was. Nice as pie one moment, roll over, tickle its stomach, and sink its teeth in your leg the next. Anyway, we were arguing, and it's out in the garden. So when she shuts the door behind me, that bugger's just, just waiting for me. And I know, I know, maybe if I just kicked it, it probably would have backed off. But Jesus, Christopher, when the red mist comes down, I mean, we're not that different, me and you. And it was just like everything that I had been bottling up for two years, just... I promise, I never meant for it to turn out like this. it for tonight. I'm going to go downstairs and you get some rest. We can talk about it in the morning. It's going to be all right, Christopher. Four thousand ninety-six. 
4,096. Father had murdered Wellington. That meant he could murder me. I had to get out of the house. I made a decision. I did this by thinking of all the things I could do in deciding whether they were the right thing or not. Stay home. I decided I couldn't stay home anymore. Christopher, please. No, because I can't live in the house with you anymore because it is dangerous. No, because you can't look after me when school's closed. I could try. No, because you're a teacher. Yes. Not a member of my family or a friend. Go on and say it with your Uncle Terry. You live in Sunderland. I don't know how to get to Sunderland. Get a train. Get a train from Swind. Also, you smoke cigarettes and you stroke my hair. You're not a friend either. I think I am a friend. No, because I can't live in the house with you or use the toilet because you use it and you're a stranger. Well, I'm not really a stranger. Yes! <laughs> Chapter Road, London, NW2, 5NG, 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW2, 5NG, 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW2, 5NG, 451C. Chapter Road. Well, NW2, 5NG. because it is pretending that something is real when it is not really real, so it is like a kind of lie. Yes, but people like stories, Christopher. Some people find things which are kind of true and things which are made up. Like, you like your Sherlock Holmes stories and you know Sherlock Holmes isn't real. <laughs> I would help you if you were worried about that. No, I think I'd like to take the part of a policeman. You're too old to play a policeman. Christopher! Christopher! Well, where do I get to? I'm going to the train station. You need a 
said that when she tried talking to you, you were in a complete trance. What's your name? Christopher Booth. Where do you live? 36 Randolph Street. And what are you doing here? I'm going to see Mother. Mother? Yes, Mother. When's your train? I don't know. Mother lives in London. I don't know when there's a train to London. So you don't live with your mother? No, but I'm going to. So where does your mother live? In London. Yes. But where in London? 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG. What is that? It's my pet rat open. Pet rat? Yes, a pet rat. He's very clean and he hasn't got bubonic play. <laughs> well, that's very reassuring. <laughs> yes. Have you got your ticket? No. So how precisely are you going to get to London then? I have a bank card. Is that your car? No, it's father's. Father's? Yes, father's. <laughs> okay. He told me the number. It's 3558! Three three Why don't you and I take a stroll down to the cash machine then, eh? You mustn't touch me. Why would I want to touch you? I don't know. Why well, neither do I? Because I got a caution for hitting a policeman, but I didn't mean to hurt him. And if I do it again, it'll be a lot worse because of the caution. You're serious, aren't you? Yes. You lead the way then. Where? Please insert your card. Back by the ticket office. Enter your personal identification number. Please insert amount. Ten pounds, twenty pounds, fifty pounds, one hundred pounds. How much does a train ticket cost? About twenty quid. Please wait, your transaction is being processed. Is that pounds? 
course, love. Yes, it's pounds. Please take your card and wait for your cash. Where do I get a ticket? In there. I want to go to London. If you don't mind. I want to go to London. Single or return? What is single or return? It means do you want to go one way and stay there, or do you want to come back? I want to stay there when I get there. For how long? Until I go to university. Single then. That'll be 17 pounds. When does the train leave? Platform one, five minutes. Where's platform one? Through the underpass and up the stairs. You'll see the sign. I see everything. And most other people never look at everything. They do what is called glancing, which is the same word for bumping something up and carrying on in almost the same direction. And the information that has is really simple. For example, if they are on a train looking out the window onto the countryside, they are probably thinking something like, one. There are some cows in the field. Two. It is sunny with a few clouds. Three. There are some flowers in the grass. Four. There's a village in the distance. And then they would stop noticing anything at all because they'd be thinking something else like, I wonder if Julie's given birth yet. Oh. I'm afraid I might have left the oven on. Oh. I really want a bag of cheesy Doritos. But if I'm sitting on the train looking out the window into the countryside, I see everything. Like, one, there are 19 cows in the field, 15 of which are black and white, and four of which are brown and white. Two, there's three nimble stratus clouds in the sky. Three, there's a village in the distance with 31 or 32 visible houses. There's a plastic bag in the hedge. There's just two of them. There's a squash cocoa called a can with a snail on it. There, there's a wind blowing from it. There's a squash cocoa. There's the flowers, the sky, the, the wind is on cows are facing. Christ, you've wet yourself up. Would you just go to the bloody toilet, would you? But we're on a train. They do have toilets on trains, you know. Where's the toilet on the track? Through those doors there. But I'll be keeping on you, you understand? No. Just go to the bloody toilet.
I waited for nine more minutes, but nobody else came past. The train got really quiet and I didn't move again. So I knew that the train had stopped. And I knew that the last stop on the train was London. So I got off the train. NW25NG. And sometimes it can be written in the form 451C Chapter Road, Wilsden, London, NW25NG. Take the tube to Wilsden Junction or Wilsden Green. Got to be near there somewhere. What's the tube? Are you for real? Yes. Over there, see the big staircase with the escalator. See the sign says underground. Take the Bakerloo line to Wilsden Junction or the Jubilee line to Wilsden Green. Are you okay? Christopher, don't get away from me! You won't be able to. I've been doing really well. Where's your Swiss Army knife? Have you lost it? It's in my pocket. Where's your red line gone? See, it's disappeared, hasn't it? How are you going to find the Jubilee line? You don't even know what an escalator is. I do. It's a moving second. You step onto it, it carries you down. It's funny, look. Stop laughing. It's like something out of science fiction. I'm worried about you. You're lying. You killed Wellington. Where are you going? To watch the pink. It's easy, look. You go up to the back machine, you look at where you want to go. You put your money in. You haven't got any money. I oh, have? Yeah? Stole your card. <laughs> you little bastard. You go up to the great gate, you put your ticket 
in a slot. There's no Jubilee line. How are you going to get to Wilston Junction? There's a big line. I can take that to Wilston Junction. Come home. Swindon's not my home anymore. My home is 451C Chapter Road, Wilson, London, Enderley 25NG. Stand behind the yellow line. I know. The train will be very noisy. I know. It'll really scare you. I know. Don't let it. Watch the people. Watch how they get on and off. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open. Train going. Silence. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open. Train going. Silence. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open. Train going. Silence. Train coming, train stopped, doors open, train going. Silence. Train coming, train stopped, doors open, train going. Silence. Train coming, train stopped, doors open. Toby? Toby! 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 Do we get back up here this instant? Well, I'm coming down there, and when I catch you, I'm going to be very cross. <gasps> oh, what what are you doing? Oi, wait, what are you doing? Get out of there, for sake! for your entire journey. Discover gold, then bronze. Is this the train to Wilson Junction? E-B-I-C. E-P-B-I-C. Obstructing the doors can be dangerous. B-R-V. Corn I C. Is this the train to Wilson Junction? Talk to the world. Warwick Avenue. Mida Bell. Kilburn Park. Queen's Park. Kensal Green. Wilson Junction. <laughs> How do I get to 451C Chapter Road, Wilson, London, NW25 and G? A to Z, map of London, £5.95. I'm not a walking encyclopedia. Is that the A to Z? No, it's a bloody chihuahua. Is that the A to Z? Yes, it's the A to Z. Can I buy it? 
£5.95. But you're giving me the money first. I'm not having you thieving. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. I'm sorry, okay? But perhaps you should have thought about that before. We weren't in, so I waited for you. What? Ah! I'm so sorry, Christopher! What the hell is going on? This means that Ed is here. Where's your father, Christopher? I think he's in Swindon. <sighs> Thank God for that. <laughs> oh my God, Christopher. I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever. Why are you out here on your own? How did you get here, Christopher? I came on the train. Christopher, you're soaking. Roger, don't just stand there! Are you going to come in or are you going to stand out here all night? I'm going to live with you because Father killed Wellington with a garden fork! Chumpy Jack Christ! <laughs> just come inside, Christopher. We'll get you dried off. Come on then, soldier. You'll catch your death out here. You follow Roger. He's hungry! Have you got any food? I can give him and some water. <laughs> Are you okay, Christopher? I'm tired. I know, love. I can get you a blanket. No, don't. I've got a sleeping bag in my backpack. Will you let me help you get your clothes off? I can get you a clean t-shirt and you can get yourself into bed. Very brave. Yes. You never wrote to me, Christopher. I know. Why didn't you write to me? I wrote you all those letters. I kept thinking something dreadful had happened. Or you've moved away and I'd never Father found... said you were dead. You said you had to go into hospital because you had a problem with your heart and then you had a heart attack and died. Christopher, I'm so sorry. For what? Bastard. Bastard! Christopher, will you let me hold your hand? Just for once. Just for me. Will you? I don't like other people holding my hands. No. Okay. That's okay. I need to speak to him. 
He's been through enough today already. I know, but I still need to speak to him. Christopher Boone, can you please open the door? Come on, Christopher. Christopher, love. It's all right. Just open the door, will you, sweetheart? Is she going to take me away? No, Christopher, she isn't. Are you going to let her take me away? No, I won't. Your father says you've run away. Is that right? Yes. And is this your mother? Yes. And why did you run away? Because father killed Wellington, who was a dog, and that meant that he could kill me too. So I've been told. Do you want to go back to Swinton to your father, or do you want to stay here? I want to stay here. And how do you feel about that? I want to stay here! Come on, I'm asking your mother. He told Christopher I was dead. All right, uh, let's not get into an argument about who said what here. I of course he can stay. Well, I think that just about settles it as far as I'm concerned. Is she going to take me back to Swindon? No. If your husband turns up and, and causes any trouble, just give us a ring. Otherwise, you're going to have to settle this amongst yourselves. I'm talking to her whether you like it or not. Just don't. Just... I'm not going to be spoken to like that in my own home. I'll talk to you how I damn well like! <laughs> you have no right to be here. He's my son, in case you've forgotten. What in God's name did you think you were playing at saying those things to him? Well, you're the one that bloody left. So you decided it was okay to just wipe me out of his life altogether? Now, let's just... Well, calm down here, shall we? Well, that's what she wanted, isn't it? I wrote to him every week. What the hell is the use in writing to him? I cooked his meals, I cleaned his clothes, I looked after him every weekend. I looked after him when he was ill, I took him to the doctor, I worried sick every time he wandered off at night. I went to school every time he got into a fight, and you, what? You wrote him some stupid letters. So you thought it was okay to tell him that his mother was dead? I was not. I'm talking to him. And if you try and stop me. <laughs> Christopher. Christopher, I'm really sorry about, about, about the letters. I promise I will never do anything like that again. Christ Christopher, please! Mr. Boone! Who is she? Did you call her? Mr. Boone, come on, mate. Don't you make me this! It's my son! Oh, I know, but this can all be sorted out. Just come with me. Ed, you should go. He's frightened. I'll be back. I'll be back, Christopher. I promise you, Christopher. I promise you, lad. You go back to sleep now. Everything is going to be all right. I promise you. All right. He can stay for a few days. He can stay as long as he needs to stay. This flat is hardly big enough for two people, let alone three. Roger, he can hear what you're saying, you know. What's he going to do? There's no school for him to go to. We've both got jobs. It's bloody ridiculous. Roger, that's enough. You can stay as long as you need to stay. It was Mother who gave me the milkshake. It was Mother who gave me the milkshake, not you. Oh, so you need to shout more loudly at me, like you're really angry, not just being nice. Okay. Roger! That's enough! <laughs> you can stay as long as you need to stay. I have to go back to school. 
Because I have to take my maths A level. You're taking your maths A level? Yes, I'm taking on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday next week. God, Christopher, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't see Father, so I have to go back to Swindon with you. I don't know whether that's going to be possible. But I have to go back to Swindon. Let's talk about this some other time, okay? Okay, but I have to go back to Swindon. Christopher, please. <coughs> what time is it? Seven minutes past two in the morning. I can't sleep. It's because you're scared of Mr. Shears. You're being silly. There's nobody about. You can hear traffic. What cars are there? A Fiesta, a Pugo, a Ford Granada, a Mini Coupe. What colors are they? I can't tell. I can only see orange and black and mixtures of orange and black. Look at what people have in their front gardens. Yes. Is that an elf? It's a gnome. And a teddy bear and a little pond, look. And an oven. I like looking up at the sky. Me too. I like it because you know you're looking at stars, which are hundreds and thousands of miles away from you. Some of the stars don't exist anymore because the light has taken so long to reach us that they are already dead, or they have exploded and collapsed into a red dwarf. That makes you seem very small. And if you have difficult things in your life, it is nice to think they are what is called negligible. Which means that they are so small, you have to take them into account when you're calculating something. I can't see any stars here. No. It's because of all the light pollution in London. All the light from the car headlights and the street lights and the floodlights and the lights of the buildings reflect tiny particles in the atmosphere. Christopher! I have to go. You don't. I have to. Christopher! Siobhan! Christopher! Siobhan! Christopher! 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 Jesus Christ! What are you doing out here? I've been looking for you. I thought you'd gone. God, Christopher, if you ever do that again, I love you, but I don't know what I'll do. You need to promise me that you won't leave the thought on your own ever again, Christopher. Christopher, do you promise me that? Yes. You can't trust people in London. Lolly. Yes, I would, please. Would you like a strawberry one? Yes, I would, please, because that's red. What's it called here? It's called Hampstead Heath. I love it. You can see all over London. Where are the planes going to? Heathrow, I think. Christopher, I rang Mrs. Gasco. I told her that you were in London and that you would do your maths A level next year. Oh! No!
we are. You wanted a radio. 100 number puzzles, that's from the library. This one is called Nuclear Power, and this one is Origins of the Universe. <laughs> They're for children. It's nice to know my contribution is appreciated. Chart. Because you've got to eat, love. This is a slim fast. Slim fast. And it's strawberry flavored. If you drink 200 milliliters, then I'm going to put a bronze star in your chart. I don't believe this. Quiet, Roger. And if you drink 400 milliliters, then I'm going to put a silver star in your chart. <laughs> Roger, for God's sake, please. And if you drink 600 milliliters, then you're going to get a gold star. A gold star? Well, that's very original, I have to say. Mr. Shears. He's asleep. Come downstairs, bring Toby, get into the car. Into Mr. Shears' car? That's right. Are we stealing the car? I'm just borrowing it. Where are we going? We're going home. Do you mean home back in Swindon? Yes. We're we going back to Swindon so I can do my maths A level. We're going back to Swindon because if we stay in London any longer, somebody is going to get hurt. 
don't necessarily mean you. No. I need you to be quiet for a while. How long do you need me to be quiet for? Jesus, Christopher! Half an hour! And you should be quiet for half an hour. When you tell the police to arrest somebody for a little crime, they only arrest people for little crimes if you ask them. Is killing Wellington a little crime? Yes, love, it is. In the next few weeks, we're going to try and get a place of our own to stay in. Does that mean that I could still do my maths A level? You're not listening to me, are you, Christopher? I am listening to you. Christopher, I told you. I rang a headmistress and I told her that you would do it next year. But I'm here now so I can take it. Oh, Christopher, I'm sorry. I didn't know if you're coming back. Just, this isn't going to solve anything. Well, look who it is. Where are we going? What a nerve, strutting around here like nothing ever happened. Ignore her, Christopher. He's finally dumped you too now, has he? What is Mrs. Shears doing? Don't pretend like you didn't have it coming, because you did! You bloody did! Where are we going? We're going to the school. So you're Christopher's mother? Yeah, that's right, and you're? I'm Siobhan, it's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Are you okay, Christopher? I'm tired. He's a bit upset. Because of the A-level, you said. Right. He won't eat. He won't sleep. You spoke to Miss Gascoigne after you called. Right. She still actually has the A-level papers in the three sealed envelopes in her desk. I still actually have the A-level papers in my desk. Does, does that mean that I can still take my A-level? I think so. We're going to ring the Reverend Peters to make sure he can still be your supervisor and Miss Gascoigne is going to call the examination board and let them know that you're going to take it after all. I thought I should tell you now, so you could think about it. Think about what? Is this what you want to do, Christopher? If you say it isn't, no one's going to be angry with you and it won't be wrong or illegal or stupid. It will just be what you want and that will be okay. I want to do it. Okay. How tired are you? Very. How's your brain when you think about maths? I don't think it works very well. What's the logarithmic formula for the approximate number of prime numbers not greater than x? I can't think. <laughs> Jolly exciting, eh, Christopher? Well, 
I'm excited anyway. Now, the exam is going to last for two hours, Christopher, okay? First thing you're going to want to do is pop your name right on front there. All right, young man, are you ready to roll? Turn the paper over, please, Christopher, and begin. I can't read the question. Can you see the question? I can see the question, but I can't read what it says. The words seem all jumbled up and confused in the wrong way to me. Right. Can you tell me what this question says? Christopher, I'm afraid I can't help you like that. I'm not allowed to. triangle the size that can be written in the form n squared plus one, n squared minus one, and two n where n is bigger than one is right angled. You don't have to tell us. What? You don't have to tell us how you solved it. But it's my favorite question. Yes, but it's not very interesting. I think it is. Christopher, people aren't going to want to hear about the answer to a maths question in a play. Look, why don't you tell it after curtain call? You can have a bow and then the people who want you can go home and the people who want to stay and find out how you solved it can do that then, okay? Okay. <laughs> Christopher, don't scream. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. I just wanted to ask how your exams went. Tell him, Christopher. Please, Christopher. I don't know if I got all the questions right because I was very tired and I hadn't eaten any, any, eaten any food, so I couldn't think properly. Thank you. For what? Just thank you. Very proud of you. Very proud. I'm sure you did really well. How's your flat? It's not really a flat, it's a room. It's very small, the corridor's painted brown, other people use the toilet, so mother has to clean the toilet before I can use it. And sometimes there's still people there, so I do wet myself. The room smells like socks and pineapple freshness. And another bad thing is that Toby died because he was two years and seven months old, which is very old for a rabbit. I don't like waiting for my A-level results. Yeah. I have to go to father's from 3.49 to 5.30 because mother doesn't get out of work till 5.30. She said I didn't have a choice. Sometimes father tries to talk to me through the door, but I don't answer. So I just push my bed up against the door in case he tries to come in. Sometimes he just sits outside in the hall quietly for a long time. Can I come and live with you? So I have room to put all my things in so I don't have to share the toilet with strangers. No, Christopher, you can't. Why not? Is it because sometimes I'm difficult to control or I'm too noisy? No. It's because I'm not your mother. No. That's very important. Do you understand that? I don't know.
No, 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 I don't want to speak to Father. I'll do you a deal. Five minutes. That's all. It's okay. I'll be here. Look, Christopher, I don't know about you, but things can't go on like this. This just hurts too much. And you have to learn to trust me. I don't care how long it takes. If it's three minutes one day and two the next and one the next, I don't care if it takes years. Because this is important. This is more important than anything else. Let's think of it like a project. It's a project that we have to work on together. And you, you have to learn to trust me. And it'll be difficult, because it's a difficult project. But it will get better. I promise. And I got you something to show you that I really mean what I say, and to say sorry. Well, well, you'll see. She's still quite young, Christopher. I promise I would never do anything to hurt you. I can't take her away with you, I'm afraid. The flat's too small. But your father's going to look after her here, and you can come by and take her out for walks whenever you'd like. What's she called? You can decide what to call her. Sandy. She's called Sandy. We have to go now. Yes. But we'll come by tomorrow, and you can see her then. Christopher. Yes? Here. What's this? It's your result. Right. You need to open it and read it. <laughs> right. Well, what does it say? I got an A star. Oh, oh that's just, that's terrific. Yes. Aren't you happy? Yes. It's the best result. I know it is. How's your dog? She's very well, thank you. Mother got flu last weekend, so she stayed on my bed last night so she could bark in case anybody tried to come into my room. How are you getting on with your father? He planted a vegetable patch in his garden. I held him and Sandy watched. We planted carrots and peas and spinach, and I'm going to pick them when they're ready. He brought me a book which is called Further Maths for A-Level. And he told Mrs. Gascoigne that I'm going to take Further Maths next year. She said, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pass it and get an A star. And then in two years, I'll, I'll take A-Level Physics and get an A star. And then I'll go to university in another town. I can bring my computer and my books and Sandy. I can live in a flat, the proper toilet, in a vegetable garden. Then, I will get my first class honors degree. Then, I will be a scientist. I can do these things. I hope so. I can because I solved the mystery of who killed Wellington. I went to London on my own. I found my mother. I was brave. You were. And I wrote a book. I know. I read it. We turned it into a play. Yes. <laughs> Does that mean that I can do anything, do you think? Does that mean that I can do anything, Siobhan? Do 
does that mean that I can do anything? Confetti! 